And how about this, right? Like, what's that? We, we didn't kill off all of our key characters, especially the villain. Mm -hmm. What a novel idea to not kill off the villain, like to let them live and therefore come back at some point, be a part of the story. It's just, is it not fascinating how rarely a villain actually doesn't well, get prematurely killed off in a show or a movie? Right. And I was thinking about this because let's just talk about one of the most, like, we'll, we'll go back to the Raimi trilogy, right? Sure. Spider-Man. Great. Great. No kill rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Green Goblin accidentally kills himself. Oops. Doc Ock voluntarily kills himself. Oops. I believe Sandman lived. Venom Sandman did had that. a weird thing. And then the other Green Goblin, I believe that was a sacrifice fly, was it not? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, hmm, it's, it's kind of weird. Venom, you kill off two Green Goblins. Right. Well, it's just kind of weird that the, the main character, whose whole thing is, I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to make you su like suffer in prison sure. and pay for your crimes. Right. And maybe you'll right. like repent. Yep. And like, well, oh, no. Nope, that's going to go, but nonetheless. Right, right. Dead. Yeah. Like, you think that would eat him up more? You know? It's a great point. Batman. It's a great point. Same thing with Batman. Yes. We go back to the Dark Knight trilogy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Rather cool. Sorry, bud. Dead. Bat Super dead. Yep, right. And Batman's like, meh. Mm hmm. Scarecrow is the. Scarecrow lives. True. But he's like not important right. after the first one, right? right? He's just there. Yep. Yep. Okay. Joker. He does go to prison. But Presumably. Yeah. But that, that's kind of a mulligan. Right. And yeah. then Bane. Bane. Dead. Yeah. It, it's yeah. It's a real weakness, and I think it's a a particularly large cop out in a huge cop in, in a movie. Like when you think about the long form storytelling that's available in a TV show, right? That's one thing when you kill off a character because you have probably had a lot more screen time with a major character in a TV show than you have had in a movie where a movie's runtime is anywhere from two, two and a half hours. And the villain takes up, you know, fourth, a third of that screen time or is a part of it. That's not that many minutes, right? right? Whereas in a TV show, you have a dozen episodes, let's say each running about 45 minutes long, give or take a few here or there. Okay. That, that's a lot of, it's a lot of bandwidth mm -hmm. right, to, to, uh, to get through. And so I understand it a little bit more in a TV show, or at least it's more forgivable, but even still like to just kill off a character is not necessary. There's so many other things that can happen to a character. They can be imprisoned. They can go to an entirely different place. It's a big world and you can get there pretty quickly. If you're going go to China, tell you what, hop on a plane, you're on the other side of the planet in about a day and a half. Congrats. And so the, the need, <laughs> It just seems like such an old school storytelling method where it's like, do we really have to be killing these characters off anymore? And then, oh, bringing them back to life through some really mysterious outlandish us comics means can they just go somewhere else? Right. And and that only applies to comics because, you know, usually when right. they kill a character off there, like it's significant to the story at the time. And then they bring them back because they want him back. Right. But like. Movies, they they have no reason to kill him. No, because they don't no. kill him that often. No, right? Unless it's the Punisher, obviously. But I don't. I find it odd when like the James Bond that yep. we had, yep. his villains survived longer than Jeez. the MCU's. Can you right. imagine if right. Obadiah hmm? from Iron Man One would have lived right. throughout the trilogy? Right. It, it's better. So much better. It's, it's better. so good. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it truly is. So it's, I would like to see, if I could have one wish for superhero movies moving forward, don't kill the villains. Leave them alive, incarcerate them, send them to Timbuktu, a different universe. Great. Just don't kill them. Don't kill them. I want to continue to see them develop and evolve and be a challenge for the hero. And if you're going to kill them, give us a good reason why. Not just because his arc is over. Do it to, like, set up the next villain. Yeah. Right? Thanos yeah. killing Ronan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
He didn't kill Ronan, but... He, I know what you mean. He, you know what I'm saying. I know what you mean. He would have killed Ronan. Well, well, Surprisingly, he didn't kill Loki. He should have. I thought he would have, you know? Right. But like, it means... But in the MCU, it means something when Loki... Loki. Right. <laughs> no, but it does. It means something when Loki is killed by Thanos. That's impactful, even though it's early in that movie, because we have had so much time with Loki leading up to that moment. So it's not a no-kill ever rule, but it's a, hey, let's let's wait like at least three movies before we're killing off a character of significance. Well, and it set, but and that set up Thanos because mm-hmm. he killed Loki and he beat the crap out of the Hulk to the point where the Hulk wouldn't come out anymore. Yeah, Hulk's like done. Which yeah, another cop out. But that's a so true. That's a that's story exactly. for a different pod. Yeah. So that's when we rewatch Endgame. What are we rewatching? Daredevil season two. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> love that. Love that. That's a very great tangent. 